Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I am Panda Pops and I like to bring you blockchain gaming and crypto related content. For today's video we are doing another Vox Edit tutorial. In this video I will be showing you how you can take the equipment from the template section within Vox Edit and create your own animations using that equipment. If you would like, I will cover every single type of equipment, showing you different things and how I would go about creating something for those. But for this video, we are going to be doing a shield. This is what the finished product will look like. This is only a super, super simple animation that I've done. This is just to give you the basics on how you can go about actually creating animation on these equipment templates. There are a few important facts to note while doing this, so please listen very, very carefully so you are sure not to make some very, very common mistakes. The first thing that we're going to want to do is head over to templates. From here, I am going to select shields. This top whole row is our equipment. These are what can be equipped to your avatar. So we have headpiece, chest piece, arms piece, legs piece, blades, and shields. So we're going to do a shield for this video. Personally, I like to try and keep all my assets in one particular place. I do have an area just for tutorials. The avatar will be ghosted out and this is what we can work from. Now there are some important things like I mentioned before. There is a way in previous videos where you can unlock templates. For equipment you do not want to unlock the templates. One of the important things about the equipment is that they are classified differently to other assets. The equipment are classed as equipment and that is what makes them able to be equipped to your avatar. The process of unlocking templates is known by many people and I do have a video covering that. The very important thing is you do not unlock equipment. The moment that you go about unlocking equipment will then turn that equipment into an entity and you will not be able to equip it within Game Maker to avatars. So we don't unlock this. Now many people might be like, but I can't click the shield and I can't move the shield about uh, to reposition and things like that. There are different ways we can go about that. One is moving the pivot point. One is also, all you need to do is create a child node off of where the original shield is, name it shield, move whichever one of these shields that you would like or if you're making one totally from scratch then you would have that already made and moved over there and link the old shield and now you have a shield that can be movable up and down side to side and you can make animations using that if you wish for what i'm doing i don't need this to have any animation whatsoever so i'm going to recolor this we're going to do a whole nice little love heart shield and the only parts that are going to have animation are going to be the additional models that we add. Now obviously if we want to we can recolor this, we can even change the shape. I am choosing not to, I don't want to change the shape at all, I'm happy with the shape that it is. I'm also going to make sure to go up to here and trim volumes. And now we need our additional models that we're going to be adding to this. So I'm going to go up here and we're going to do new VXM. Right, so this is our first heart. I'm just going to trim that down. We're going to go to our pivot point. Now the pivot point is the position that an asset will do its animations from. So for this case I just want it to be like its move position to be centered. So we've done one heart here. Now I'm going to do a medium heart. The animation. That seems about the right size. I'm also going to center that as well. 
Uh, I, I may need to play about with a few sizes to make sure that they they fit nicely together, but I think that looks about right. And then our final one. And now we've got all those trimmed and we've got our hearts all set. What we do now need to do is make them appear on our shield. So as I've mentioned before, we can't move our shield, but what we can do is we can create child nodes. So I'm going to have part one. Part two. So what I'm going to do with all of these is I'm going to rotate them. I'm going to take this, I'm going to rotate it. Right now I'm just positioning these now into place. They line up nicely. The next bit is we're going to now go on to animation. Now we can't do any animation off of our main shield, but we can do animation off of any additional child nodes that we add in. I want everything to start inside the shield, so I'm moving everything into its starting position. And as you can see, we can actually see underneath here, which is a little bit of an issue. So we're going to go back to the main shield and I'm going to take this back piece and I am just going to add it there. So now that covers that up and it is hiding those other pieces now. We cannot see them. We don't get any Z fighting. We have no issue. They are hidden inside the shield. What I'm going to do for heart one, I want to appear first. But I'm going to move the arrowhead around about here. I'm going to press this diamond. This will keep that model in that exact same position without moving. And then a single keyframe later, we want this heart to just appear. We don't want it to proper pop off of it, but we want it so it shows nicely. And we're just going to have it pop up there. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six to about there. We're going to press the diamond again so it keeps it in that same position. See how this one has a line going through and this one doesn't? That means that there is movement detected and it's moving in a linear way. We can obviously change the way the animations move, but for one single keyframe, that is more of a total jump. And then another single keyframe again, and we're going to make this just go back to its original position. So I'm going to copy that first one there and paste it. So now it's gone. The next thing I'm going to do is go to heart number two. I'm clicking heart number two. Well, I want the first heart to appear for a little bit and then the second heart to appear. So I'm going to have it so the heart appears. I'm going to do our diamond again and single keyframe. We're now going to move this one up for about three. Put this in there and then single keyframe. Once again, we're going to have it go back its starting position we are then going to do the same with the final one now we have it looking like this this is one thing to note as well as you can see we've got this animation going all the way right to the end some of these animations stop before we get to the very very final keyframe we actually need to make sure when any animation is happening that everything ends at that final keyframe so what we do is we make sure the arrowhead is in line with the very final keyframe that happens in the animation. We click this diamond and now everything is ending and closing at that exact same final animation. What will happen if you don't do this is it will look fine in Vox Edit. It will actually look okay in the thumbnail over on your sandbox account. But when it is placed in Game Maker, you may see that the animations end up going a little bit weird. Some pieces will start flying off or drifting off in weird places. And it's because it knows that the animation ends here and it doesn't understand why there's no end keyframe for these other ones. So it tries to fill in that gap. And this is why I always end your animations this way. Hopefully this has taught you some do's and don'ts on how to go about animating a equipment template. 
If you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. If there is any tutorials that you want me to cover, do let me know. And I will just do a real quick recap on this. So what we have done is we have used a template, which is clusters and equipment over in Vox Edit. The top line are all equipments here. So head, chest, arms, legs, blades and shields. These are all equipment types. They can be equipped to your avatars within the sandbox game maker and used within the games. When it comes to making animations on these pieces, you do not want to unlock them. I have a whole video on unlocking and don't worry, you will not accidentally unlock them. There are numerous steps that need to be taken to unlock a template. So do not worry if you don't know how to unlock something, you most likely will not accidentally go about unlocking it. The other key important section is as well that your animations need to end on the same keyframe whether or not any movement is happening. You can tell if movement is happening when there are these lines happening in between. If they are completely blank like it is here, there is no movement happening. It sits in that still place and then appears for that movement. Make sure all your animations end on the same keyframe, whether or not that they are equipment, this applies for any animation that you create. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I upload a brand new video. If you'd like to check out some more of my tutorial videos, check this one out. If you'd like to know more about some other blockchain games, check this video out. As always, have a good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the metaverse, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!